can't be talking on angels. And so uh, if you turn to page uh, 23 in your syllabus, uh, we would like to begin where we concluded in our last uh, talking to you. We were dealing with the names of the different beautiful creatures in heaven that come under the angelic order uh, in studying eschatology. And uh, we went down through cherubim and then we got to a group that we seldom hear of. And that's in point four. It, it's called the, the Holy Ones and the Watchers. In the book of Daniel, in chapter four and verse 13, it reveals to us more in the order of the categories of angels. Speaking of holy ones, uh, creatures that were called holy ones. <laughs> it's a very nice name. And then the watchers, as if, as if God also has a tower people up in the towers looking. Uh, I know when God came down, he said, I have heard uh, that uh, that there is a great sin in Sodom. So evidently the watchers were watching the area and the place. And, and, so, uh, and, and so he came down to investigate personally to see if, if what had been told to him was actually just like it is. And so um, uh, these came down from heaven, demanded that Babylon be destroyed. Isn't that something? He says, I, I saw in, in the visions of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher and an holy one. So you have the two. They're not the same. It says plus a holy one. And they came down from heaven. Now, now due to the demands of the holy ones and the watchers, the king of Babylon was dethroned. The angels uh, were the ones that decided that he should come off his throne because of his wickedness in his heart. And they caused that king of Babylon uh, not only to be dethroned, but that he lived with the wild beasts of the field for seven years. Now that, that, that's a strange one, unless they put him in a zoo somewhere, uh, that he was roaming over the uh, out side there uh, among the wild beasts uh, and lived with them and had fingernails like claws that long and, and so forth. And this continued for, for, seven, for seven years. Let's look a little further in Daniel uh, chapter 4 and I read just a little more if you will. Uh, we'll begin at verse 16. Uh, he says in and, and let his heart be changed f uh, f from man's heart. Now, uh, um, give some thought to that. That the heart is no longer a man's heart, but a, a, a demon spirit heart. Then you can see what causes wars. That a person's heart is not a man's heart anymore. They're, they're, they're leaders in the, in, in the, in the world of fighting over there in the former Yugoslavia that, that show you that there's a heart there that's not a man's heart. When you shoot an old lady, 70, 75 years old, that you don't know her name or anything just because she's standing in line wanting some food and you kill her, or if you shoot a little boy, you know, five or six years old, uh, then, then that's not a man's heart. And that's something else. And so it says they, they took from him a man's heart and, and let, a, let a heart be given unto him and, and, and let seven times pass over. That meant that he would remain that way for at least seven years. Now, if you continue reading there, I hope you have a teaching syllabi. Uh, we will look at verse 17. It, it, it says now, uh, the, the matter of the decree of the watchers. And maybe you've never seen this before, you see. Uh, th this was the decree of these angelic beings who were God's watchers, watching to see how men lived. There may be a watcher over at your house. I'm sure there are watchers over the United States of America saying, 
My, 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 my. How could they backslide so deep, so quick, you know? Uh, from from an, a nation that loved the Bible to a nation that hates the Bible. I'm, I'm sure the watchers are, are watching, and we don't know what they will decree as of this moment. And, and he says, and, and, uh, and the demand by the word of the holy ones uh, to the intent that the, the, that the living may know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will. Now, you should pause there because God hasn't changed just because it's 2,500 years ago. God has not changed, you know, that God can give the leadership of nations to whomsoever he will. You have to back off on that one and just look at it real strong for a while and say, my, isn't that an amazing uh, situation that he will give the rulership of nations to whomsoever he will. And I, I've had a theory from a very young person that usually the, the person that's ruling a country represents the masses of the people of that country. He's not a stranger to them. That, that he represents the one that you have ruling over you that you voted in into office also represents you morally and spiritually. You said, not every one of us. No, of course not. Just the majority. Just enough to be boss, you see. And that you should give thought of. Germany was ready for a Hitler. It had lost World War I. They had been drugged through the bottom of the gutter after World War I. And they were ready for such a man, as you see. And the devil came right into a man. And God permitted him to rule because of the insides of human beings. Sure, we should all vote. Sure, we should ask God who we should vote for. Uh, and then we should ask God to have mercy. When, when Abraham was pleading for Sodom, he said, if there are 50 good people, will you save the city? You know, a place of a couple of million, maybe three million. God said, yes. And he brought that number clear down to 10. And had God convinced that if there were 10 good people there, he wouldn't destroy that place. And these are angels that he was talking to there uh, with, with God. And so uh, we, we should come to understand what makes the world go around. It may be a lot more than you ever thought making the world go around. And so that's a great purpose in studying the Word of God. That all the living may know, may, may know the most high God uh, in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will, and settleth up over in the, in the, setteth up over the basest of men. That's just, just like I just told you, a person like Hitler, and maybe some people in our own country, you know. All right, and, and he says, whereas the, the king saw a watcher, isn't that something? A, 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 an holy one coming down from heaven. The king saw it, mind you. And he was saying, hew down the tree, destroy it, leave the stump of the tree at the roots thereof in the earth, even a a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field and let it be wet with the dew of heaven and let his portion be with the beasts of the field till seven times have passed over. Could these watchers and holy ones still be at work today? I don't think God changes his program. I think we need a I don't know of anybody that's taken this many lessons about angels. You hear what I'm telling you? And I don't know of any group of people other than this community that don't care about angels. And a lot of people that call themselves very religious don't want to be talked about angels. Well, don't worry, they won't be around your house. There'll be somebody else there. Until you love what's right, you don't get it. I want to get it. Teresa, I'm giving these studies. I, I want it. I want everything God has for this hour. 
And I want to be ready for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man comes. And all the people said. So we believe there are watchers today and, uh, and holy ones. So leave that in your spirit and that's what the syllabus is about. Take it home and study it. For God's sake, don't close it up on Sunday and say, I'll be back for 30 minutes, seven days from now. That is not the way to do it. Uh, number five says that there, in this world, principalities, powers, and rulers. It says that we do not, we do not fight against people. This is Ephesians 6 and 12. In, a, in our own spiritual lives, but we struggle against principalities. Now that, that might be in a person and you will not be able to identify. When, when the young girl in the Philippines, when we went to cast her out in Bilibid prison, she, she, she saw over a hundred people that came into that little room to see what I was gonna do. They were observers. She never said a word to them. But when I was the first one that went in, so I was the last one she saw up at the front, and she began to blaspheme at the top of her voice. You could hear her clear across the, the courtyard there in the prison house. And she began to cuss me. She had never seen me, and she didn't know I was on the face of this earth. So it was a demon spirit functioning inside of her. So when I dealt with her, I didn't talk to her personally because she had nothing to talk to inside. I had to talk to that thing, that thing that possessed her. And I came right straight back against this, that spirit and he answered me back. She was in a neutral zone and we were in the two battle zones, the deistic battle zones where right was fighting against wrong. And we didn't, we didn't deal with each other. She didn't deal with just the natural people in that room. The demon didn't either. But when it got to God's servant, capable of fighting and resisting, there was action real quick. Real action real quick. Now, shall, 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 we, shall we look? I, as, as you know, a principality is an area with people in it over which a, presents, a, a prince presides over it. He is the king of that area. Uh, there are several uh, geographical areas in the world today called a principality, where they're ruled by a prince. Uh, Monte Carlo is such a place uh, between France and Italy. It's ruled by the Prince Rainier family. And, and so they don't claim to be kings, they just claim to be a prince, you see. And so, an area that has a prince over it that rules it, then, then, then he is the one that we're talking to. So in Ephesians 6 and 12 says, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but we wrestle or fight against principalities. And that means uh, uh, a demon prince that has demons under him, you know? We fight his whole kingdom. We fight his whole domain. I don't personally think Satan has ever had the grip on Manila that he had before I came there. That the principality was broken to pieces. And from that time, well, the 150,000 people getting saved a few weeks later, and from that time, there have been tens of thousands of God's people saying, I rebuke you. <laughs> He's having a hard time around that place. You see? Because we hit the prince. We knocked him off of his throne, and now the people keep him off through rejoicing and praising the Almighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! So we fight against principalities. We fight against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Now, you, you, could, you could pause there for uh, a, a long time. There are evil spirits who are the rulers of the darkness. They're not our rulers. They're rulers of the darkness of this world. In, in New York City, you have a spirit of, of graft and a spirit of deceit and 
a spirit of greed. Where in another city you may not have those as dominant spirits. In Paris you'd have a spirit of lust for human flesh that would be very strong, much stronger. And you go to other places like India and other and, and uh, Tibet and other places, then they have certain types of spirits that dominate the human lives from the spirit world. Are you here all right? And then, uh, and then he says, we are coming against our battleground. <laughs> Very few of us ever get our pajamas off, you know. We don't know anything about warfare. We just know the bed. We don't, we don't know anything about entering into a, a, a battle with Satan. And then people who, who stand up and speak in tongues and scream and shout and, and to sing, they're trying to cast Satan down. Well, honey, he was cast down at Calvary and he hadn't got up yet. We sure don't need you to cast him down. And these people that are standing up and acting silly, you know, we put you down. We, he's already down. What do you mean? You say, well, what can we do? Obey the Bible. The Bible says, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. So all you've got to do is say, go. You see, that's all. He has to go. He that is in us is greater than he that's in the world. So when you say, go, he goes. But it's not a battle. Jesus won the battle. Hallelujah. And the battle is still won. It's not waiting for you to win it. It's waiting for you to accept it the winning that Jesus did for us. And all the people said, against the rulers of the darkness of the world, every darkness has its own ruler, every evil, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So we're trying to teach in this lesson here, you might say the categories of evil spirits that Satan has developed and, and that, uh, that, that, that follow him. And then we go to number six, the, the different ranks of thrones and powers and dominions and principalities. In Colossians 1.15, it says, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature, for by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are also in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones, dominions, principalities, or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And so these, these uh, spirit world people were, were created by God. You say, well, how, how did they become evil? Through through lust within them. Now, you, you've got to know this, that there cannot be any love until there's the potential of hate because it's the same machine gone negative, you see. And God is love and God desired love. You and I are the desire of God on this earth. God wanted someone to love. Did you know love will die if it isn't poured forth? You cannot put love in a box. It has to be out on Main Street. I love everybody. Then you stick in a room all by yourself. You love nobody but yourself. You're not fooling anybody. You see what? Love is an act. If God had not given his son, he couldn't have proved his love. Are you here? If Jesus had not given his life, he couldn't have proved his love. The evidence of his love is that he loved. Amen. And the evidence of your love will be loving someone. And there, is, there, there, is no, there, there is no in between. A love is a movement and, a, and, and an act. And it can increase within us as our knowledge increases. If we put that love into action within us, but if we selfishly use it, then, then it goes to the wrong thing. I, I don't really want to say what I'm going to say, but uh, maybe you ought to hear it. 
heaven is forever. But you don't have to stay there. The gates are open. You can say, I don't like all this love stuff around here. <laughs> and you can leave. You mean, you say, you mean you can lose heaven? No, you can walk out on it. You say, well, why would you say that? It wouldn't be love anymore if you had to stay. When it's a compulsive act, then it's not love. Love is a voluntary action. Are you here? When a man winds up his feet, his fist and says to his wife, says, I'm going to teach you to love me. No, you're going to teach what a frying pan feels beside the top of your head. You see. You say, why? You can't make love. Love has to flow freely. It has to f flow volitionally. It has to flow because something within you is flowing out from you. Or it's something else besides love. If, if God got up there and locked the gates of heaven and said, you can never leave here now. You're going to be here forever. Some of you would start making ladders to see if you could get over the wall. Are you here? But if the gates are open, why'd you come back? I love it here. You did go outside the gate. You visited some constellations. Now you're back again. I'm going to stay back. You see. Is that all right? All right. Now, but, and the thrones and the powers and the dominions, God made them, but they don't have to serve him. And, and number seven, in, in Psalm 78 and 49, it says, he cast upon them the fierceness of his anger and his wrath and his indignation and, and, and trouble by sending evil angels among them. Those who volitionally fight God and turn against God and don't serve God, you actually get what's coming to you, you know. If you want to be lustful, God says, take the spirit of lust and let him have it then, you know. But if you want a spirit of love in you, just start saying, oh God, I just want to love you more. And the first thing you know, <laughs> you just start pouring more of it in there. God made you a creature who can form your own destiny. And anyone that says otherwise don't know God. They just don't know God. Because when God or anybody else says you've got to do it, you no longer have a willpower. You no longer have a resistance power. Then you're a slave to that thing. But if there's a choice to make, that's where we have sinners and we have righteous people. If there's a choice to make, then we're able to do that. All right, on page uh, uh, 25, it speaks to us about the four living creatures. They're different from all the other angels. And I'd like you to study them very, very carefully. They're the ones that keep heaven ablaze with glory to God and the praise and the majesty of God. And then in the book of Revelation, chapter 14, they have the additional uh, functions um, of the judgment of God upon the earth. Angels do during the great tribulation. In chapter 15, they pour out the wrath of God upon unrepentant men. Angels do it. Angels do it. The living creatures may have other, other duties that they perform before God, of course, which are not revealed to us at the present time. But the, but the insight which have been given us to realize that, that God is a holy God, that's what they keep telling us. Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty. And that he will not permit sin to go unpunished. Say there's something to think about. You may think you can just get by with sin. So many people have tried to get by with it and keep it a secret. But when God says, be sure your sins will find you out, you might as well believe it. Amen. Yeah. You might as well believe it because your sins will find you out. It's better just to live an open, pure, honest, sincere life before the Lord. And then you can be happy ever after. And all the people said, yeah. 
I'm glad that we're not trying to hide anything. We're open before God and before the world to say, here we are. We love God and we serve God and we're going to heaven. And anything that goes along with it, we'll take that too. Can you say amen? And our helpers along the way are angels. And the angels that bless us can curse wickedness and come against wickedness. It was an angel that burned Sodom and Gomorrah. Whew, can you imagine? And it was an angel that took Lot out safely from that place. So there, there, there's a world around us of, of persons, uh, and we want to respect them because God made them, and they serve God. And in eternity, you and I will have our place of working for God and serving God. And all the people said, Amen. 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 Well, we're going to deal with something very interesting in our next lesson. What do angels know anyway? <laughs> That'll be, there's some things they don't know. But we will enjoy it very, very much. You like angels, everybody? Good. Let's, let's penetrate the subject. Some things don't come easy, they just come. So we push till we get what we want to know.